Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to FM Scout. It is RDF and today we're going to be looking at a tactic that I just recently created. It is called Madai Lazio. It just basically means come on Lazio, hurry up Lazio. <laughs> it is based off Cantinaccio. This system is obviously based off a defensive system. You can see here the tactical style is a custom Cantinaccio. So I used the preset, I tweaked and fiddled with it and this is what I came up with. Of course the playing system is supposed to be fairly fairly defensive but what I have tried to do is try to make it more modernised. Of course Cantinaccio is a system that was used many many years ago. That's when it was most popular I believe. So I've tried to modernise it and maybe this could be a future tactic that you use in your Football Manager 21 saves because as you know this game is slowly coming to an end with FM21 coming out. So if you're looking for a new playing style other than the gegen press or a high press this could be for you it was fairly successful in this football manager version i don't know how it's going to play out on fm21 but it was not designed to break the match engine or anything like that it is just simply to focus on a style of play and try and get results that way so what we're going to do now is talk a little bit more about the tactic Cantonaccio's style of play was influenced by the system invented by Austrian coach Karl Rappen. In Italian, Cantonaccio simply means dobo and in football, that translates to highly organised and defensive football. This style of play became very popular when it was used by Inter Milan under Helenio Herrera during the 1960s. Usually in a Cantonaccio system, a sweeper would be deployed within the back line while the rest of the defence were man marking defenders who were tightly marking the opponent's attackers with the sweeper simply just picking up any loose balls that got past the rest of the defenders. Around five players back then had no attacking duties whilst even the supportive players had many defensive duties to carry out. Herrera claimed that his tactics were actually more attacking than people remembered. Their attacking fullbacks hardly got recognised or credit for their attacking support. People mostly remembered their destructive football that tried to disrupt the opponent's play and also the game just in general. To attack, they heavily relied on counter-attacks and looked for opportunities to play a more direct pass or even a long ball to the more attacking threats. So that is the canter now wrapped up in the system but in this tactic I tried to gain some numerical superiority whilst also trying to create some singular superiority. What I mean by that, in this tactic we want to create numerical superiority to help the team penetrate the opposition. There are many benefits to this whilst in position and we want to use it to create overloads on one side of the pitch allowing then a player, preferably a very good one, to have a 1v1 against the opponent in our attack and play on the other side of the pitch. So the idea is in this tactic we want to create overloads on the left hand side, this will naturally make the opponent's defence move over to that side of the pitch. Once we have completed that first part of this, then we want to have a right winger who is asked to stay out wide, always a free option, so we can then switch the ball to that player. Often enough, he would now be in a 1v1 situation with the opponent's defender where he has more space and time to attack that player in that 1v1 situation. And now we have explained that a little bit, we can look into the tactic and how I have implemented those stuff into the Football Manager 20 tactic which hopefully can be used also in Football Manager 21. So here we are, it's a 4-3-1-2 asymmetric tactic, it's actually really a 3-4-1-2 or simply a 5-2-1-2. So when I was talking about the overloads on one side, here we have the wing back on support who is of course going to run wide with the ball when he is in possession of the ball but also we have the box to box midfielder who will be running wide also to that side of the pitch whilst also a target man is deployed on the left hand side so you can see naturally a lot of the play will be focused on the left hand side which will allow this right winger here always a free option on the right hand side of the pitch. As you can see the poacher on the right hand side will rarely look to be involved in the play whilst the central midfield on defence will just look to simply hold his position in front of the back line. 
first off we're going to start with the mentality as you can see we are using a balanced mentality i didn't want to use cautious or defensive i found that when you are using these mentalities the opponent often has too many shots against you which is actually dangerous because the conversion rate can hurt you at times so i went for the balanced mentality which isn't positive in any sort of way really it's just working out the opposition throughout the match during the match this now gives us flexibility to change things as and when we please in possession we have gone with the standard attack and width that is with the balanced mentality i didn't want play to be too narrow neither did i want play to be too wide too narrow for me the play is going to be involved a lot through the middle if we lose the ball in the middle we can then be exposed to counter attack directly to our goal and if we play any wider i felt that with a more direct passing system we are now becoming a little too risky whilst in possession so i have left it on standard our approach play, we want to focus down the middle. Through the middle, you can see we have the truck Quartista. We also have the target man on attack. But also, not just that, I felt that the players through the middle could also do with a little increase in their mentality. So if I remove the focus through the middle, the box-to-box -box midfielder's mentality doesn't actually change, but you will see that the central midfielder on defence, it will. At the moment, without that instruction, his mentality is on defensive. As soon as I use this instruction now, you will notice that his mentality has actually increased to cautious. So he's still actually playing a little bit more cautious, but just not too cautious for my liking. Also for the libero, for me, who is going to be key in this system, he will be dribbling more, trying to take the ball out of defence, really organise those counter-attacks or more direct play for our team. Without the instruction, his mentality is on balance. With the instruction now, his mentality has actually gone up to positive. Our passing directness is slightly more direct. We want to be more direct with our approach play. We want to get the ball to the target man. We also want to get the ball to our Trequartista. They are our focus plays. They are our outlets when it comes to attacking play. With the tempo, we have gone with standard. Normally, the preset, the tempo is on lower. But again, things happen too slow. And our counter-attacks may not happen with such speed that we want. And if we play with a higher tempo, again, with the direct football, we are adding too much risk to our play, I feel. So, tempo on standard for me was perfect during the game if you are one nil or two nil up at half time time wasting is always an option you can increase it to sometimes i wouldn't go all the way to frequently but sometimes it's actually a nice instruction just to kill off and be destructive in the second half of matches this was frequently used throughout the system for me now in the final third because you are playing a little bit more cautious shoot on site is one way to increase your goal scoring chances so what i noticed is that if our players are taking shots there's always an opportunity for us to collect the ball from a shot being blocked or a rebound from the goalkeeper or simply we can just score from the speculative shot in transition when the possession has been lost i didn't want to go for regroup because i feel that we sat back a little bit too deep instead of defending just in front of our box or on the edge of our box i felt a lot of the times we was actually defending inside our box and that is never a good thing if we are inside the box that gives the opponents players who are lurking outside the box a little bit more time and freedom to either pop off a shot or pick out a dangerous pass when possession has been won, we are going to be asking our team to counter. That is going to be very, very important for our counter-attacking play. When the goalkeeper is in possession, he's going to distribute it to our centre-backs. You can either roll it out or you can take short kicks. But for my preference, I went for roll it out rather than take short kicks. Out of possession, this is going to be key, very, very key to the Cantonacho style of play. When it comes to the line of engagement and defensive line, I have left it on standard. Once I dropped these lines to lower or much lower, I felt that we have just simply dropped a little too much. It just invited the opposition's team a lot more. Rather than being disruptive to their play, we actually started allowing them to play. We wasn't disrupting them a lot, we was allowing them to play a lot. Standard line of engagement and defensive line just gave us that perfect, perfect balance. With the defensive width, of course, we're going to be narrow. We're going to maintain solid, very, very key to this play. You want to be solid in defence, you want to defend the main central areas of your goal. For the marking and tackling, 
we have gone with the get stuck in and use title marking again the main main focus is to be disruptive and these are very very good disruptive instructions for the present intensity we have gone for the less urgent because again that is very very vital to the canton natural style you want to be less urgent but saying that in europe this system did not work very very well i'm a little i'm almost too embarrassed to mention this but in the group stages of the champions league we lost 4-0 at home to psg and we lost 9-0 away to psg yes you heard correct we lost 9-0 away to psg now one reason why i thought this happened in europe was because of this less in less pressing intensity for some reason this system isn't the most effective in europe so simply what i have did is just made another version which is why in the tactic download there will be two tactics this will come with a more urgent pressing intensity this was only used in European football. I didn't want to take away from the Canton Actual style too much. So I didn't want to use this tactic too much. I only used this in Europe. Once I made this change, once I put this to more urgent, the results suddenly just switched and became a much better and much stronger team in Europe. Once we went back to the Serie A, we then went back to the main tactic, which had less urgent pressing intensity. So now we are going to look at the player instructions and their roles. For the goalkeeper, he is just simply a normal bog standard goalkeeper who is on defend. We have two central defenders on either side of the libero who will be sweeping out, who will be sweeping in the middle of the defence. His instruction is simply to dribble more. As you would notice, we aren't playing out from the back. So the libero will be key in our transitions from defence to attack. He will be dribbling it out more. Once he dribbles it out, he has now better angles to play the pass either out wide or centrally, whatever decision he makes. For the left wing back, he is on the support. He will be looking to get up, also be looking to get back, of course, to help out his team in defensive phases. He is asked to pass it shorter, which is a less risky option. Because he has no support on his flanks, we don't want him to be losing the ball to poor passes. But we are asking him to dribble more with him running with the ball out wide. On the right hand side of our asymmetric formation, we have the winger on support, who is key for our security system. He is asked to pass it shorter, again for the same reasons as the left wing back he is also asked to hold his position we don't want him to be roaming around moving from his position because he's actually very very key also in the defensive situations in central midfield we have the box to box midfielder who again is asked to pass shorter but he is also asked to run wide with the ball so we want him to get out wide with the ball really overloading this area of the pitch with the wing back getting further forward and of course the target man will be the main focus of play on that side of the pitch his central midfield partner is the central midfield who has the defensive duty he is going to be asked simply just to operate in these areas here in front of the back line he is asked to take more risks he's going to act similar to a deep line midfielder so when he is in these positions once he receives the ball he will be taking the more risky pass to try and help our counter attacks and break down the opposition from the deeper areas in front of the two central midfielders we now have the trek artista who is on attack he is going to be our prime creator someone that is going to be creating a lot a lot of chances on the left hand side of attack we have the target man the main focal point when it comes to attack and play he's going to be our target our go-to guy when we need to release some pressure and his partner is going to be the poacher who is simply going to be poaching for goals he's not going to become too involved in play he just mainly wants to focus on goals goals and scoring goals so now we have covered the tactic let's look at some of the results As you can see here, Lazio actually won the league playing the system. We managed to play 38 games. We won 27 of those. We drew six and we lost five. Those five losses came against Hellas Verona at home. Udinese away, which was a 3-0 defeat. Very, very poor. At home, we lost to Sassolo. We also lost to Atalanta away. And then we lost at home to Sampdoria also. So three home losses alongside two away losses. So for goals, you can see Chiro Immobile as the poacher score 32 goals, outscoring Cristiano Ronaldo. Very, very good. He was also the highest average rated player in the league, so very, very important for us. Whilst Luis Alberto 
our main creator, our trick quartista, also was very, very high on the average rating. You can see here, Luis Alberto got 15 assists. So Immobile was heavily focused on scoring goals. He did his job. Luis Alberto was heavily focused on creating and he did his job. When it comes to clean sheets, Strakosha also got 18 clean sheets. That is equal with the best clean sheets in the league. So, of course, our defence must have been also very, very decent. You can see here, average possession wasn't very, very high because we are playing a direct, a more long ball approach. For the goals, we did score the most amount of goals, which came as a big surprise for me. We managed to score 85 goals. When it comes to scoring from corners, we managed to score 7 goals from corners, but we got 14 goals from our indirect free kicks. When it comes to passes completed, we are way, way at the bottom. So does passes matter? Ask yourself. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't. And when it comes to chances created, thank you to Luis Alberto, our main creator, we actually created the most chances with 107 chances created in the league. Now, when it comes to conceded, goals conceded, we only conceded 29 in the league, which was the second best defence, only coming behind to Atalanta. When it comes to conceded from corners, we actually didn't concede any goals directly from corners. And like we saw previously, we have the second most clean sheets in the league. So you can see here, Immobile, he's got 32 goals in the league, also with the best average minutes per goal. When it comes to assists, Luis Alberto was second with 15. When it comes to key passes, Luis Alberto made 68 key passes throughout the season, but he also created 27 big chances, with Manuel Lazzari also creating 15 key chances. Dribble per minutes, it's nice to see that our right winger has the most dribbles per 90 minutes because it seems like our superiority play is actually working in Football Manager. That is very, very nice to know. And when it comes to offside, no surprise, Immobile with the most offsides in the league. Now, when it comes to defensive stats, generally, I don't actually get players in these leagues here because I'm mostly focused on the more positive mentalities. So it's actually nice for once to see a few players make these lists. So now, Lulic, he's in the list top 10 for most tackles made per 90 minutes. Manuel Lazari is also 18th in the Serie A, so that is very, very good. When it comes to mistakes, though, that is not very, very good news. So Lazari, Lulic, and Savic all made very, very big mistakes, or maybe not big mistakes, but just mistakes in general, because as you can see, only one of these mistakes actually led to a goal. But when it comes to key tackles, Luis Felipe is in the list with 16. When it comes to key headers, Francesco Acerbi, he's got 72 key headers throughout the Serie A. Also with interceptions made, Luis Felipe made that list with 92 interceptions. When it comes to shot blocks, you can see that Acerbi also made very, very high amount of shot blocks. He's got 21, so it's nice to see that our style is playing out very well but also it's nice to see that it's being effective. So you can see here we got off to a very, very good start in the Serie A. We got brought back down to earth a little bit by PSG in the Europe with Neymar scoring a hat-trick at our stadium. But when we went to PSG, like I told you before at the beginning of this video, we lost heavily 9-0 to Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League. But we picked ourselves up very, very well, beating Juve 5-1 at home or Zebre, which one ever you prefer. But you can also see we got off to a very, very good run again, beating Udinese 4-0 at home. We beat Crotone 3-0 away. In the Italian Cup, though, we got knocked out in the very first stages against Fiorentina, who usually plays well against me when I play against them. We also lost 2-1 at home to Sampdoria, then losing 1-0 away, sandwiched by two victories before that. But then after February, we had a very, very good run. Again, our next loss came at home to Sassuolo, and then it got to very, very scary times when we lost away to Udinese. But thank you for the nil-nil draw at Tottenham. Our performance seemed to pick up, and we got a 4-1 victory at home, and a 2-1 away victory to Napoli. The 4-1 at home to Crotone actually finalised our champion status in Serie A. In the European final, we also beat Arsenal. I'm sorry, Arsenal. And also sorry to myself, but we beat them 2-1 in the final. These stats, it looks like we got heavily dominated, but when you look into more detailed versions of it, 
they created three half chances, but we actually created the better chances with three clear cut chances, also hitting the woodwork one. Looking at some squad stats, Immobile, he's got 35 goals in 50 games. Luis Alberto, 15 goals and 20 assists as our Trequatista. Carrera could have played as a striker and he did for some parts. Casado was actually our target man with Immobile as our poacher. Lulic got a, a fair amount of goals, so did Savic. They both hit double figures, so very, very important players. When it comes to assists, Lazari and Liberto were our prime creators. Immobile actually got nine assists with Casado with seven. Casado only actually scored three goals, which is fairly, fairly poor. Meluki, their new signing, got five goals, but target man was more to help us release pressure rather than score goals, because I know our poacher is going to be the main source of goals. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy actually seeing a new style of play rather than a more positive play. As in the comments, that is always, always a subject that comes up. Why is it always pressing, pressing, pressing tactics? Why is it never the more cautious tactics? Well, I hope that I can cater for everyone, especially during FM21. But thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. So I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.